Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwame Asha Allah, Koholoyim la Yahweh Bashim Yahweshai, Bahashim Rakaha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water toward the Akim and Akwaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and command, commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweshai to the best of their ability. Jachanan Awaf, just coming at you with another quick, quick lesson, praying that it's edified by the Spirit. And uh, I wanted to touch on this uh, article. And it's going off into an uh, instrument of um, complete, basically, torture, man. Um, and it was called the Brass Bull. And I'm certain, pretty certain, you know what I'm saying, that a lot of our people, Hebrew Israelites, were tortured in this way. Or at least, you know, um, Christians, so to speak, or, you know, uh, ones that were really truly following Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus back in the days in the ancient times. But it says the worst ways to die in history, the brass bull. Okay, so and I seen a, a, a it was a TV series that was on, not on regular TV, it was on one of those um, apps, or whatever. I remember watching it like last year or something. I think it was called the Atlantis. Uh, it was about uh, um, you know that, you know the world Atlantis or whatever you know. Um, but anyway, they you know they went off into a lot of mysterious things that you you know you hear about as far as fables and a lot of those old wives tales and stories and stuff but they did have an episode in there where they had the brazen bull and it was in there in that um it was in there twice but each time they never showed no one you know actually being tortured in it but the people that were actually being brought up on charges and you know that was their judgment they were you know <laughs> shook to death man they were scared as shit you know as far as like the way that they were showing them in the in the um in the actual uh you know um tv series but anyway let's play this real quick the worst ways to die in history episode two the brazen bull an alleged execution method that originated in ancient athens the brazen bull is a particularly heinous way to kill a human being beginning with the creation of a life-size bull made entirely of bronze metal and hollow from the inside the design featured a clasped door that could only be opened from the outside once the condemned were trapped inside a fire would be lit under the bull's belly the bull's exterior would conduct the heat and create a kind of internal oven, slowly roasting the victim inside alive. Bronze isn't very good at conducting heat, so the process would have taken quite some time. But that's not all. The bull's throat and nose were supposedly fitted with strange acoustic pipes and whistles, which were designed to convert the screams of the man inside into the snorts and whines of a bull, making the brazen bull one of history's only melodic execution devices. Know a worse way to die than that? Become an Absolute History member and let us know what you'd like us to investigate. Okay, and pretty much that was pretty much about it on it. Um, so I went off into it. I looked up, looked it up, or whatever. And um, they have some history on it. I went through a few things in it. It says the Romans have been claimed to have used this torture device to kill Christians, notably Saint Austus. I'm not sure who the hell that is, but let's check into it. As you know, of course, they're going to give you more than likely some so-called white guy, possibly. Then again, I don't know. This kind of looks like a Negro. Oh, yeah, that's a Jake right there. <laughs> I ain't even know that. That's a, Hey, that appears to be a Jake right there. Look. That appears to be a so-called black man. Okay, all right. Let's see then. Let's go back. Okay, so it says, um... St. Austin, if I'm pronouncing that right, is revered as a Christian martyr. According to, the, to legend, he was martyred in A.D. 118 at the command of Emperor Hadri Hadrian. Austin was a pagan Roman general who converted to Christianity after he had a vision of the cross while hunting. He lost all his wealth, was separated from his wife and sons, and went into exile in Egypt. Called back to lead the Roman army by Emperor Trojan, Astus was happily reunited with his family and restored to high social standing. But after the death of Trojan, he and his family were martyred under Hadrian for refusing to sacrifice the pagan Roman gods. And hey, this hey, this is all it could be. Able, you know, good part of that history, man. Um. Going back into, you know, the Apocrypha, you know, with the Maccabees, which I want to pull that as well, because, um, 
Uh, let's see here. Let me go back though. Uh, the creator, so called, of it. And this is the Wikipedia, so it, you know, it could be more information on it. I'm in the Wikipedia. I checked a few things off in here. Um, let's see here. But this is the guy right here, supposedly. Phalaris is supposedly the. Um, it says. Um, both of these names kind of sound alike. It says, Parellaus of Athens invented and proposed it to Phalaris, the tyrant of Acragus, Sicily. So when you go off to Athens, of course, you know that's Greece. Then you know a lot of our history too, as far as like in the Apocrypha with our people, you know, going into the Greek captivity, being, you know, basically Hellenist, which you can see right here. It says, um, uh oh, Salaki, I'm offline. Oh, man, all right, let's see. Ancient Greece, right? It says Hellas. See that? Romanized Hellas was a northwestern Mediterranean civilization existing from the Greek Dark Ages of the 12th through 9th centuries BC in the end of classical antiquity. See? That comprised a loose collection of culturally and, and linguistically related city states and other territories. Most of these regions were officially unified only once for 13 years under Alexander the Great's empire. So we know that Alexander the Great's um, history is in the Apocrypha, right? It says from 336 to 323 BC. So this is why we tell you, you know, you newcomers that's coming into this truth, get that King James, you know, go into the place, the app store. You can get it, whether it's Apple or um, whether it's Android or whatever, and go into the um, Play Store or whatever and get you a, um, put in 1611. King James Bible with Apocrypha because that's the original, you know, King James. You know, you can actually buy the, the you know, a Bible at, um, a, they may still sell them at, uh, they got them at certain bookstores. I, I ended up grabbing one from Borders bookstores one time, you know, um, when I first came into the truth. It's actually got the Apocrypha in the, you know, in there, you know, that original 16 King James 11, um, 1611 King James Bible, Salakia, it's got that history in there, you know. So um, and I'm about to go into the apocrypha, but this is this is very interesting though. Okay, but anyway, so this brazen bull man was no joke, bro. As a matter of fact, let's go off into this guy. This guy right here, Phalaris the tyrant, right? It says Phalaris Greek was the tyrant of Agragus. Now. Argento in Sicily is Magna Graecia from approximately 570 to 554 BC. Okay. Let me see though. Um, let's see here. Man, that shit had to have been painful, bro. The way that they, they, you know, describe it, to put you in there and to slowly, slowly just roast you. So, basically, the guy that created it, he basically put some, like, some tubes and he, he, you know, it was like, you know, I guess once the screams came out, they, he, he had it where, matter of fact, let's just read a little bit of it. It says, the head of the bull was purportedly designed with a system of tubes and stops so that the prisoner screams were converted into sounds like the bellowing of an infuriated bull. Phalaris is said to have commanded that the bull be designed in such a way that its smokes rose in spicy clouds of incense. According to legend, when the bull was reopened after a body was charred, the victim's scorched bones then shone like jewels and were made into bracelets. And you notice, hey, this is Esau Edom written all over it, man. And he was gifted with that sword because just think about a um a, a element of of um torture like that, you know. Just think about what it takes to think something up like that. You know what I'm saying? And he, and he he saw man the so-called white man. Hey, he's been around and he's been into weaponry for a real long time, man. Trust me when I tell you this man knows how to torture. <laughs> he he knows how to torture, man. It says um. Stories allege, after finishing construction of the execution device, Perilius said to Phalaris, 
His screams will come to you through the pathetic, most melodious of, be of bellowings. Perilius believed he would receive a reward for his invention. Instead, Phalaris, who was disgusted by these words, ordered its horns sound system to be tested by Perilius himself, tricking him in into getting into the bull. When, per when Perilius entered, he was immediately locked in and the fire was set so that Phalaris could hear the sound of his screams. Before Phalaris could die, Phalarius opened the door and took him away. After freeing him from the bull, Phalaris is then said to have taken Perilius to the top of a hill and thrown him off, killing him. Phalaris himself is claimed to have been killed in the brazen bull when he was overthrown by Telemachus, the ancestor of Theron. So we don't have time to go off into these, but I mean, go into Wikipedia and pull this up and you can look up a lot of history in here. But what I, you know, when I seen that, it just kind of made me think of the story in um, the Apocrypha when it came to uh, Second Math. This is Second Maccabees chapter seven. I'm going to start from the top verse one and it goes off into that mother and her seven sons. Right. It says. Um, it came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh which is pig which is oink oink which is a damn pork chop today a ham sandwich or whatever you want to call it a pig foot some goddamn chitlins you know and were tormented with scourges and whips now our our ancestors died man the mother watched all seven of her sons get tortured cut up maimed arms and legs and shit cut off tongues cut out you know what I'm saying? All these different things because they wouldn't eat swine and you niggas would run right into a damn grocery store and, and grab a, a red bucket with the white cap on it and cook some goddamn chitlins for um for a, for a idolatrous ass holiday. And the Lord gonna deal with you niggas too, man. The Lord gonna deal with you. Y'all you keep the Christian shit up running around talking about how, you know, uh the Lord died so you can just do what you want to do now. That you know all meats are clean, all food. He died for our sins. The law made everything clean. Y'all keep listening to these 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 rat bastard ass pastors, man. These greedy dogs, and you're gonna get that business, man. Our ancestors went through some shit, man. Check this out, though. Let me just read it. It says, "But one of them that spake first said thus: What wouldst thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. See that?" He says, we're ready to die. We ready to be out of here. You see what I'm saying? We ain't about to eat no goddamn pork. You niggas are going to eat it for fun. Pork chock dinner at the church. It says, then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans, see, and cauldrons to be made hot. See that? That's why that brazen bull, it reminded me of that. So, and, and look, in these last days, when shit hits the fans, when the torture really goes down, and this man, you know, hey, you'd rather be beheaded than to be cooked in a goddamn pot, man, or a cauldron, or thrown into something like a, a brazen bull, man. Trust me, you, because that's complete. You, at least if you're being beheaded, it's kind of like more of an instant thing, you know. But to be, you know, check out the type of torture they went through to keep from eating this, just to say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to fall to your bullshit. I'm not listening to you. And you need to have the same attitude when it comes down to that MOTB, that market of beauty and the beast, that Revelation 13, 16, when it straight comes down to it. Because this man is going to be torturing your family members in front of you, possibly, which I'm pretty certain of, you know, me speaking as a man, I'm, you know, but of course, if there's going to be some beheadings, He's going to more likely be having you watch those beheadings go down. You know, he's going to be like, all right, you want this to happen to you or you going to take this chippity chip chip. It's going to be a, somewhat of a similar situation. So we have to, you know, gather the, you know, the balls right now, you know, for lack of better terms. We, you know, we have to, you know, ask you how about Shimmy I was shy, man, for that build up that uh, uh nigga, that real austere spirit. Like, fuck you, Esau. We ain't taking shit. We'll die for our Lord, man. We're not going against the, the, our Lord. We're not going against the law, statutes, and commandments of our Lord. Yeah, how about Shimmy? I was shy, right? This is the attitude that you we got to have right here. Because this mother, she watched all seven of her sons die throughout the day. You know how long it took? You know, she, you know, she's probably, man, oh, man. 
Anyway, let's get to, let's get the rest. They man, they they said cauldrons, man, pans and cauldrons. Four, verse four, which forthwith, being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first. So he cut his tongue out, right, and to cut off the utmost parts of his body. The rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. See. That's enough of them have you shook right there. The average person today, they like, nah, 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 you don't know what you want me to do. Please don't worry about baby. No, this mother was like, hey, y'all go, hey, I'm telling you, man, hey, look, this is how we got to be right here. And I'm praying that I'm, a, you know, that I'm, I'm ex, you know, act exactly this way. Hundredfold. Right? It says, now when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him, being yet alive, now he's still alive, to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die. Manfully, saying thus, the Lord God looketh upon us and in truth hath comfort in us. As Moses in his song, which witnessed to their faces, declared saying he shall be comforted in his servants so when the first was dead after this manner they brought the second to make him a mocking stock and when they had pulled off the skin of his head with his hair ooh, can you imagine that man they scalped the brother man they asked him wilt thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body but he answered in his own language and said no Wherefore, he also received the next torment in order as the former did. So he got the same business that his brother got. They, they scalped him. Look, can you imagine your, your hair being pulled, your, your, whole, your skin being pulled off with your hair still attached like it's a goddamn wig? Come on, bro. Because they wouldn't eat swine. And you niggas, man. You niggas. Y'all that eat swine, man. Y'all, 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 y'all can't, y'all can't have a burger without bacon on it. Niggas, man. Lord gonna deal real, real nicely, though, man. In a minute, yeah, you Jake, man. Y'all better repent, man. Cut the bull out. And and that that, that brazen for for your ass catch that brazen bull. Okay, it says, um, let me see here. Verse 9, it says, and when he was at the last gasp, he said, thou like a fury takest us out of this personal life, but the king of the world shall raise us up. And that's what we're looking for. What we're, you know, we want to fight to the end because we have faith that Yahweh Bashem Yahushua is going to raise us up, man. Who have died for his laws unto everlasting life. So see, you supposed to be having a mindset, man, look, I'm going to die for these laws. Statues and commandments of Yahweh by Shem Shai because he's the one that kills, he's the one that makes alive, and he can bring me back, and he's gonna bring back the children of Israel, man, that are obedient. Those he's gonna bring back every single one of them. Matter of fact, that's in the, on the book of Revelation. You know? Matter of fact, let me see. I think I got the blue letter up. Let's see. Let's go to uh Revelation real quick. What is that? Chapter 2. Verse 10. It says, Fear none of those things. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. It says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. See, like how those brothers was tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. See, and that's that's basically what what was going on right here in the um, Maccabees with these brothers, man. See, let me get verse. What was that? Verse nine again. It says, and when he was at the last gasp, he said, "Thou art like a fury takest us out of the out of this present life, but the King of the world shall raise us up, who have died for His laws, entering unto everlasting life." So the Lord, man, He gonna look out, man. In the end, you're going to get that everlasting that everlasting crown, man. It's going to be well worth it. But when I was, you know, I was kind of meditating on this, man. It's, it's, it's scary, bro. 
You know, this, hey, this <laughs> shit is scary as shit. Can you imagine, man, your tongue being cut out? Your arms and legs being cut off? Your damn hair being scalped? You know, and then you being put into a frying pan? Motherfucker just cooking you alive, bro? Come on, man. Hey, but we got to have that mindset to take this, man. Verse 10, it says, after him was the third made a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put out his tongue. And that night, and that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully. He like, man, well, come on, bring that shit on. I'll take that too. And said courageously, these I have, I have from heaven. And for his laws, I despise them. And from him, I hope to receive them again. See? It's the mindset we got to have, man. These are some brave brothers, man. It says, um, in so much that the king, they that were with him, marveled at the young man's courage for that he, he nothing regarded the pains. He's like, man, fuck this pain, man. Forget this, man. Now, when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, it is good. Being put to death by men to look for hope from Yahweh to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life. <laughs> it says afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said. Matter of fact, what's that on verse 14 again? It says, so when he was ready to die, he said thus, it is good. Being put to death by men to look for, for hope from Yahweh to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt, Salakia, thou shalt have no resurrection to life. So, we do know that, um, you know, people come back and, you know what I'm saying, as far as, um, he's clearly telling you that there's a such thing as, uh, each one of these guys, you know, they kind of mentioned there's a such thing as, um, regeneration. You know, or uh, you coming back, so to speak. So, but what it's saying here is he has no re resurrection um, to life, you know. So, him coming back is not going to be the same as, it, you know, as um, the, the children of Israel coming back. You know what I'm saying, so to speak. You know, because it, when we go into this new kingdom, Esau going, man, it's, hey, they, 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 it's going to be pure hell for them, man. It's going to be pure hell for them, man, on this planet, man. You know, in in, in the new kingdom. Because we're going to be ruling over them with, with all kinds of um, um, righteousness. <laughs> Righteous anger, so to speak, right? Okay, but anyway. It says, afterwards, they were brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men. Thou art corruptible. Thou doest what thou wilt. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of God. But abide a while and behold his power. How he will torment thee and thy seed. See that? So this is what's, this is what's coming. So when it goes up into thy seed. That seed is going to have seed. And seed is going to have seed. And that nigga is going to be back. That's why the scripture talks about um, that third or fourth generation. You know what I'm saying? You you, you know you, you you know you come back every you know third or fourth generation, so to speak, man. So through his seed, this you you wicked yeah, you through your seed, you know, <laughs> because those people are back on earth right now. But anyway, the point that I wanted to make was when I seen this, it just made me think of the torture that um our people have gone through under the hands of Esau Edom, the so-called white man, and it's been going on for a very 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 long time. But I wanted to um let me see. Let's go off into it. I want to um, slot. See if we can see what a cauldron is. Ooh, ah, damn! Hey, you see this here? This is right here. It's considered to be a cauldron right here. Let me see. They got some images on it. So damn, a big. Hey, them pots right there, man. When them bitches get hot, they get hot. I can remember um. You know, when I was in the South in Alabama, um, and you know what? It's crazy because um, my wicked ass uncles and aunties and them, and I'm not going to front. I, you know, I was a part of it too as well, but they used to cook hog cracklings in these shits. 
big ass pot of um um grease. You know what I'm saying? And they fire that shit up with that wood because these things get hot as shit, bro. And they throw them hog cracklings over in there and they get the crackling. Then they'll put them in like bags with and, and, and sprinkle them with salt and pepper and shake the bags and shit up. You know what I'm saying? And hand them out to the kids. So I'm not going to front. I am guilty of that. I had to repent to Yahweh by Shimmy at Yahweh Shai for that when I was a little bitty kid, man. You know? I remember that. Being in Alabama. You know? So these are things, man, that we have to repent to Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh Shai for and not um go back to doing oh hey don't you know that's why i just done a lesson yesterday about reading the labels um the brother um the elder from south carolina he put up a uh he shared the video and i should have put it up there myself i mentioned it in the video but he said to get the green label vegan um jiffy mix it's like a cornbread mix now if you get the regular one it's got lard in it you know which is basically pork but they have one that's got a green strip at the top. It says vegetarian on it. So, you you know, and I went off into that. And I also went off into, like, um, they had some collard greens that had damn um, ham broth or whatever in this shit. And some pork broth. And, you know, so if you're looking at it for face value at the front, you're looking like, all right, well, shit, these collard greens, these legal to eat. Shit, but no, nah, you better read all the label, labels, man. Because he is putting all kinds of, he's, he's putting pork in everything. Be as careful as you possibly can, man. Read those damn labels. But look at here. Our family members, these are our ancestors, man. Our family members went hard body math to not eat swine. Matter of fact, let's get the, ver the very first verse. This is what all this was all about. This motherfucker killed seven people and a mom. Because they got her too. Matter of fact, let me see. Let me get, I didn't get the account of her. Let's see here. Verse 17, again, they telling him, the king, they saying, but abide a while, basically stick around, and behold, his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. After him also, they brought the sixth, so they brought the sixth son um, forth, who being ready to die, see, he ready to die, he like, fuck it, man, said, be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against our God. Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us. So we sinned against Yahweh by Shem Yahweh side. That's the reason why we're going through what we're going through right now as a people. Marvelous things are happening to us as a people, man. We're shook now here. We're fucked up as a people down here, man. We're, we're, we're royalty in the hands of, of a complete fucking heathens, man. Being worked, worked to the bone. You know what I'm saying? Being, you know what I'm saying, you know, clock got a clock in for this fucker, this motherfucker taking money from us, you know, calling it taxes and sending it to Israel and sending it to Ukraine and sending it wherever the hell else he want to send it. In the meanwhile, he's not putting any of it towards us, you know, but he's, he's claiming that we're equal, you know, they're calling us all types of bywords, you know what I'm saying, our children are all fucked up, the women are all fucked up, the men, I mean, we just threw as a people. You know, you know, marvelous things are happening to us, man, because we sinned against Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, right? Okay. It says, um, verse 19, but think not thou that takest in hand to strive against God, that thou shalt escape unpunished. You, you see, you, you Edomites, you, none of y'all, none of you nations. None of you heathen nations, from you so-called Chinese to Japanese to whoever, the, none of you are going to go unpunished, man. All of you. Because um, Psalms 83, it names off all the enemies of the Lord. And the top enemy is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Then you damn Ishmaelites that's over there, you know, acting a goddamn fool um, over there in um, Palestine right now. And, and you know, other places, too, because they scattered through uh, throughout this place, too. But... You know, you so-called Chinese, so-called Japanese, all you different nations, y'all going to get that business, man. You're not going unpunished, man, for what you've done to the children of Israel. Right? Verse 20, though. Now, this is the mom right here. It says, but the mother, but the mother was marvelously, was marvelous above all. So she was, you know, supposedly, hey, she was, she was marvelous above all the sons, man, because she, she went hard. Because she actually st stood there and she had to watch her sons go through that shit. So, you know, she didn't break down. It says, um, but the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bare it with good courage. 
because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Woo. Now, where you women, you women today, what you going to be doing today? You women that are at ease, man. You women that have been um, walking around here and been dependent upon the enemy and help the enemy destroy us as men. You know what I'm saying? What y'all going to do in these last days? Y'all going to eat that goddamn pork, which means more than likely you're going to take that chippity chip chip. And that's, you know, the illustration that I'm using. You're going to take that goddamn chip, man, if you've depended upon Esau like that. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to be destroyed. You 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 want to, you know, not take it and, 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 and take the grunt of whatever's coming your way for not taking it and be rewarded from the Lord than to take that shit and be rewarded from the Lord of punishment. <laughs> Either way, you're going to be rewarded. But you want the good reward from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You don't want the bad one, man. Because there's going to be bad things that's going to happen to anybody that bow down to Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, and take his chip and let this man implant some goddamn computer shit in your ass, man. You're going to be through. You better you better, you better, take a note from this woman and her seven sons, man, and be ready to go out like a champion and pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that he gives you what it takes to do so, right? It says, but the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bare it with courage because of the hope that she had in Yahweh. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirit and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. She said unto them, I cannot tell how you came into my womb, but. For me, it's like, yeah, I can't I cannot tell how you came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life, neither was it that I that I formed the members of every one of you. So she's acknowledging that she don't understand how to she she's acknowledging that this is the Lord. See what I'm saying? This is the Lord that 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 created the womb, you know, and it's a scripture that talks about that, how we don't know how the bones are formed in a baby, so to speak. Or, you know, we we don't man, you can't fathom how the Lord put together a put a spirit into a body and that body comes to, you know, fruition as a as a as a child, man. You see what I'm saying? And she's acknowledging that basically. Okay, it says, but doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also on his own mercy give you breath and life again. As you as you now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. See? So there's a such thing as reincarnation. You know what I'm saying? Regeneration, man. Those men, those, those, those men and that woman are probably back here right now. Right now. They could be back here right, right now. You know what I'm saying? You know, so it is what it is, man. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to just touch on that. I didn't want to keep this long. Hey, I, I thought it was, you know, when I seen that, that particular article, I'm like, yeah, that kind of remind me of, um, hey, that culture and shit, though, man. Look, man, a pan, though. Because, I was, you know, there was some big-ass pans back then. And they had, to, see, this is like your, you can you can buy these pots. But back then, you know what I'm saying, them kings, man, they had a pot big enough, man, to put a few people in at a time, man. Put 15, 20 people in a goddamn pot, man, like it wasn't nothing, man, and cook them. And these were just the, the torture um, um, hookups on these dudes, man. I mean, you know, as far as like um, how these how these people, you know, really got down back then, man. See, Esau, and this man is still that way. Esau, Edom, man, he's still to get down on you. And he's going to get down. He's going to get down. Esau about to get down on our people, man. So y'all better wake up, man. Y'all better wake up, man. I'm telling you, man, it's about to get gruesome out here. You know what I'm saying? But we want the attitude of this this mother and those seven sons, man. And and hey, our Lord is an austere man. Look and think about what our Lord done. Yeah, how was shy, man? Now you know we're not him, but we are, you know, you know, replicas, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? He sent us his spirit, you know, the spirit to 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 to, to endure. But you know, we're just praying that you know what I'm saying, he would not um, you know, uh Remove his Holy Spirit from us according to um, Psalm chapter 51. So, you know, hey, man, stay on top of it. You know, hey, understand what you're into. I, I was explaining that to somebody I was speaking to um, just the day before yesterday. I was going to do a lesson on it. But I told him, like, hey, look, man, you know, hey, when you come into this thing, when you come into this truth, you're enlisting into a war. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and things are going to get 
shit going to get to get thrown at, at you from all different types of directions. As soon as you come into this truth, man, you're going to lose some shit. Your woman might leave you. Your man might leave you. Your mama and them mad. Your daddy and them children, you know, you know, whatever, man. You know what I'm saying? You might lose a damn house, your car, your job. Your, you could be out here on this. You never know, man. I'm telling you, man, when you come into this truth, the Lord, man, he'll break your ass all the way down. And he'll allow certain certain people into your life to do so, around you to do so, to build you up. He'll tear you down to build you up, man. So you expect to go through some things, you know, when you come into this truth, man. And, and it's not an easy ride. It's going to be something all the way out of here. You just got to be, you know, but the Lord is preparing us for what's to come. You know, when everybody else going to be bugged the fuck out because they're not going to know what to do, you're going to be, you should be settled in. The Lord is preparing you. He's preparing you for it to, to be, you know, uh, what's that, that, uh, the scripture where it talks about, um, uh, house on the hill, no, the, um, the house, the sand, Salakia. It was, I think, let me see if I can find that. That's what it reminds me of. It says, as the, um, the wind blew and beat upon that house. Let me see. Been a minute on that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. This is it right here. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking because it's red letter. Um, it's entitled um, The Two Foundations. Um, and then in that, the New Living Translation is, is entitled Building on Solid Foundation. Building on a Solid Foundation. Verse 24, Matthew 7 and 24 says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And that's what we're, you know, the Lord, that's what we're doing. You know, you you know, you want to be building your house upon a rock. Let's see why. It says, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. That's what these scriptures are for. You know, that's why the scripture talks about uh, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. I think that's Isaiah 33 and 6. But, you know, when things get rocky and things get out of hand, you you should be unwavering. You know, you should be like that house that was built upon a rock. You're not going to be shook by it. But guess what? The people around you that's not into this truth and they don't have these scriptures to fall back on. Hey, they ass is going to be blown away. And matter of fact, let's get this part. It says, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. See, this is going to be the people around you. See? And it's going to be funny, because you know what? The people around you are going to be people that you find, you know, they're going to be loved ones. They're going to be, you know, really, you know, biological people to you you know some your mom your dad your uncles your aunties your favorite cousins you know all these different people and they're gonna be you can't fall with them you can't get blown over with them because a lot of our people we done told them about the truth we've explained it to them we've explained it to them. hey look man hey look this is the lord's name you know we are the children of israel you know you excited when you first come into this truth i told everybody all my neighbors everybody on my all the people down the street, I'm talking about everybody. Still to this day, I'm just, I still kind of do it here and there. But, you know, I done kind of settled in a little bit more. So I'm not, you know, um, you know, I'm just using wisdom about who I'm kicking it to right, right off like that, you know. Because you do have to use wisdom. But some of these people are going to be your family members, man. When when things get rough and you're going to have to be, you have to come to a point of being, uh, uh, cutting their asses off. As close as they are to you, as much as you love them. You're going to have to cut them off, man, because what's going to happen is if you don't, they're going to drag you right along with them. And you're fighting for a crown. See, you might lose them on this side, but you'll get them back in the, in the, in the, in the, in the future of the kingdom. So, But you can't allow them to drag you um, um, into the shit that they're about to be into, man. You're going to have to leave them alone. You have to make a decision. That's going to be a hard cut, too. That's going to be a, a part of um, somewhat of a test, temptation, so to speak, to cut off somebody that you, you know, you love like that because they don't believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. They're going to be bugging the fuck out. 
You wait until things get rough, man. You want to be that house that's built on the rock, not the house that's built on the sand. Those ones that's built on, let their asses blow on away, you know? So I just wanted to touch on that, man. I pray that the lesson was edifying with that. Kwame Shalom.